Welcome to Inside Healthcare. America's win at the Women's World Cup has brought a lot of focus on especially young girls going out to the soccer fields and getting more involved in some of the youth sports this fall. So we've come to the urgency room at Egan to talk with Dr. Christy Trussell about perhaps some of the injuries that parents might see with their girls, in particular, let's start off with sport, with soccer this fall. What are the type of injuries that you see? Well, girls particularly, in soccer particularly, there's a lot of running, jumping, cutting, and direction changing. As girls age, uh, this puts their this can put their knees at risk for ligament or cartilage damage. Uh, as girls get older, their hips widen in proportion to where their knees are, and it's really important to develop the strength and the the buttocks, the thighs, the core to help stabilize those movements. Without that core and buttock stability, you re really run the risk of putting extra strain or even tearing uh, ligament in the knee. Particularly, ACL injuries are. So how do you know when you should take your child to the urgency room or to seek emergency care then for those type of injuries? Yeah, well, I think everyone has experienced bumps and bruises. And we all know what that feels like, but if it seems like pain is out of proportion to a usual bruise, if you're ever unable to walk on an injury, or if an area just becomes uh, quite swollen, those are, those are warning signs that something more serious may be wrong. And then to prevent some of those injuries, what advice would you give to parents and to coaches and, and even the girls themselves? Yeah, so as you start new activities or restart activities that you've done before, it's important to, to ramp up slowly, make sure that you, uh, you plan with your coach for appropriate strengthening exercises ahead of time, and keep an eye on minor aches and pains before they grow into bigger problems. And I think no matter what time of the year, you want to stay well hydrated as well. Absolutely. That also helps prevent some of those, right? And Absolutely. stretching and breathing and all of those good advice. Absolutely. Like what about some of the other type of injuries that you see with youth sports, especially in the fall time? Well, concussion always comes up when we talk about youth sports. Uh, soccer doesn't always come for top to mind for folks for for head injuries, but the reality is is that players collide, they're using their head to head the ball, so that is that is an injury that we see commonly with, with youth sports. And it seems like the message has gone, got out to coaches and stuff like if someone has a head injury, take them out at least, at least through one play or something like that, and if it's more serious, they should come seek emergency care. Yeah, the, the, treatment for, the treatment for concussion is, is time and rest primarily. Certainly if there seems to be more serious symptoms, uh, severe headache, vomiting, confusion, or really any concern, uh, concern after a big bump to the head, they, the player should be checked by the doctor. Good advice. And then what other type of injuries do you see? What are some other common ones, like wrist or Right, ankles? yes. So we see folks that, kids that fall on their arms with their arms out in front of them and brace, and that can result in either a forearm fracture or a broken wrist. Those are really common. And how do you know, again, you know, is it just a sprain or is it a fracture? I mean... As, as, a, as opposed to like a compound fracture, but how else can you tell? Well, certainly if the area is deformed, so if, the, if something looks displaced, that's a, certainly a reason to come see us at the urgency room. If, if there's more swelling than one would expect from a normal bump or bruise, or simply if pain is, is more than you would expect from, from a general fall, those are times that x-rays may be indicated. And would you recommend that um, the, the student also have protective um, braces or things like that? to kind of pre prevent some of those injuries? Well, that is that would be very dependent on the activity, um, mm -hmm. and that would be something to speak with an athletic trainer about. Um, yeah, I was thinking the same thing when we were talking about the ACLs and stuff on the knees, like maybe a brace to help reinforce those. Well, braces, braces are for more treatment after, or not preventive. So we wouldn't use bracing for prevention for an ACL injury. Okay. That's more uh, what we would use is, is strengthening, proprioception, and teaching the girls how to, how to use their body in space, strengthen the muscles that they need to stabilize those movements. So what other type of injuries do you see and should parents and coaches be aware of? Well, certainly we see a lot of ankle sprains. Uh, we see a lot of ankle sprains, bumps, cuts, bruises, those sorts of things. And again use good judgment on whether they need emergency care or if it's lingering, you know, make sure that they go see their primary care. Yeah, well, if there's, you know, certainly if there's an acute injury that's very painful, um, has a lot of swelling, prevents walking, or prevents usual daily activities, they should be sooner rather than later. If it's an issue that it's ongoing and just doesn't seem to be getting better over time, also a reason to check with your doctor. And what final advice would you have to 
prevent how to keep them safe during the fall and when they're going out for these new sports and things? I would say gradually increase level of activity. Be really honest with yourself and your coach about how things are going and just be really mindful with the, with the coach's help about what your training program is. And you're available here at the Urgency Room in Egan. You have a couple other locations. Absolutely. We're uh, in Vadness Heights and Woodbury as well. We're open every day of the week, so we'd be, we'd be happy to see anybody for their sports injuries. Well, great advice for our parents and our coaches, so thank you. And for the young athletes as well. Thanks, okay. Doctor. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after this. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We never know. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay. All, G. You all right, girl. Oh, you cool? You're bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. Seize the awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I had something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. I'm always the first one up. I'm always up for a challenge. I'll overcome any obstacle. I don't believe in limits. I refuse to be average. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Anxiety is the most common form of mental illness in the United States. Identifying and treating anxiety is the focus of a documentary titled Angst. Take a look. My hands start to shake. I feel like I can't breathe. I kind of start to breathe really rapidly and I can't slow my breathing. So then my body starts to think that I, that there's no oxygen and that I'm dying. My vision gets pretty blurry and I can't think. I don't know what the brain does to cause that, but it's, it's <laughs> nasty. In a moment, we can tell you where you can see this documentary in the Twin Cities. The trailer highlighted anxiety among teens, but anxiety is also a major health concern among seniors. And joining us to talk about seniors and anxiety, we're pleased to have with us Mariah Van Duren with the Serenity Care in White Bear Lake. So thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. 
First of all, before we get into that, just tell us a little bit about um, Serenity Care for people who aren't familiar with it. Sure. Uh, Serenity Senior Care has been in White Bear Lake for over 60 years. It used to be referred to as the White Bear Care Center. So many people within the community have had families that, um, family members that have stayed at Serenity or even in our rehab. Um, we have various um, you know, lines of care from assisted living, apartments to skilled nursing, as well as um, a rehab unit or transitional care unit, and we have outpatient therapy. But we help um, over, well, many, many seniors annually um, through our transitional care or rehab, and we have almost 200 uh, seniors that call Serenity Home. And that would be even someone who's had surgery or something that they're not ready to go back home, but they need to go to a, a transition. Absolutely, care it would be short-term care. Um, average stay is about ten to fourteen days rehab after surgery, like you said. Mm -hmm. So even if they haven't even had surgery or some other thing, anxiety is very common. I understand among seniors. And tell us a little bit about that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think. Anytime you're um, transitioning from, from a home, maybe you've been living in White Bear in a home for 50, 60 plus years, um, raising your family, and then you find that there's a need, you end up maybe in our transitional care for rehab, and um, they identify, you know, you really should probably be moving into assisted living or even um, need skilled nursing. Um, that can come as a really big shock to people. And anytime you take someone from their normal environment or in their normal mm -hmm. um, patterns of life and, and habits that can cause anxiety and uncertainty and aging too, the aging process and even getting closer to death for some people um, can you know, evoke anxiety for them. So what would be some of those signs and symptoms that someone is having anxiety? Sure, I think you know the most, some of the most common signs um, would be excessive worrying, also uh, feeling agitated um, or irritable, um, relentless uh, fatigue that just doesn't subside, and often difficulty uh, concentrating or sleeping or maybe oversleeping as wow. well. Fatigue wouldn't be something I would think of, like, you know, they're, ju they're just tired, you know. Like right, a, right. And they would always have maybe an excuse for it or something like that. Well, it takes like a lot that. of energy to excessively worry, so maybe it makes you tired, too. <laughs> and then if it's not treated, that can lead to even more serious problems. Oh, absolutely. Um, at Serenity, we try to use natural ways to kind of alleviate anxiety if we can, you know, even using lavender in a diffuser, for mm -hmm. example, or having various activities activities to keep people you know, active and engaged and getting out of their room, um, having, you know, one-to-one -one visits with volunteers or their familiar faces, family members and friends. That's nice mm -hmm. that you offer that care as well as traditional medicine and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And there are treatments as well available. Then. Yes, yeah, we have uh, certified nurses, obviously, that staff our facility. Um, and we have spiritual care uh, as well. Um, we are uh, an interdisciplinary disciplinary um, faith-based uh, senior care center. Mm -hmm. So regardless of your faith, we have a wonderful spiritual care director that will meet with people and hospice care is available as well. So how do you help um, loved one family members if they're aging parent or maybe a, their loved one is having anxiety? How do you how do you help them to recognize those signs and symptoms and when they might need more additional care and stuff? Sure. Um, well, you know, each senior that lives at our facility also has a, a social worker that's um, in charge of, of their care and their well-being. Um, so you have a team of professionals, really, that is there to help support that individual who's living um, in our community. Um, so, you know, care conferences, people come together, they meet with the family, um, the social worker and the nurse, you know, they come together to make sure that the individual is, is receiving total care. Um, so it's not just the medical needs, but also mental health needs and, and spiritual and, and general wellness. And knowing that um, seniors may have a higher risk for having anxiety and stuff, you're actually going to be showing, we just showed the trailer for angst, you're going to be showing a couple of showings coming up here. Why don't you tell us about this documentary Sure. and um, what it's all about? 
Absolutely. Um, our administrator, uh, Pat McDonald, met with an uh, individual from the Youth Service Bureau. Her name is Mary. And um, he had an opportunity to bring this film to our community to present. His thought was really to um, help our staff um, who, you know, experience also anxiety. Sometimes caring for elderly can be stressful and, you know, people do pass away at our facility too. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, you know, ways uh, to mitigate that by just understanding. And a lot of our staff obviously have children too. And so it is open to staff to participate in the, the screening and the following interactive panel for not just themselves, but their families and um, any child over 10, it's encouraged that they come along as well. And you're gonna have um, two different screenings. One is more open to the community, but they're welcome to come to either screening, they're yes. free. Correct. Um, there's one in the afternoon at uh, from 3 to 4 p.m. on Tuesday, September 17th, um, and that is a little bit more condensed. It's about 45-minute uh, viewing. Uh, it's geared for our staff, but community is welcome to join us for that as well. Um, otherwise, the full uh, version of the film, it's about an hour, will be shown at six um, from 6 to 7.30 with the interactive panel. And um Knowing about the documentary, who would you recommend that from the general public should attend it? Who should come see it? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really. I mean, I think anybody can benefit. I, I think oftentimes in life we may not realize, too, that we've experienced anxiety or maybe isn't diagnosed. Um, but definitely, I think everybody knows somebody who has been touched by it in some way. Um, but I think... Um, uh, teens definitely should come participate. You know, I've been um, reading a lot that teens, it seemed like even more than ever, that there's a high level of anxiety among teens currently. Absolutely. Everywhere, not just here absolutely. in Minnesota. Yeah. I think it's a it's a really timely offering for, for our community. Um, just, I mean, I think the world in general, it, it, a lot of people are having anxiety because they just are concerned about general safety. Um, so I, I really think um, participating and viewing this and just kind of asking questions so you better understand um, what anxiety is and maybe recognize signs and ways to help mitigate that for yourself or a loved one um, is a good thing that anybody could benefit from. And you mentioned that you're gonna have a panel following the, the earlier screening. Tell us about the panel and, and who's gonna be on it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there will be an interactive panel for both. Um, oh, for both, okay. Yes, uh-huh. Um, so after the film uh, concludes, then there'll be about a half hour uh, window of time um, for people to ask questions or kind of process what they have seen. Um, uh, we're still working on confirming the details of who exactly will sit on each panel, but uh, we'll definitely have our Director of Social Services, Linda Sove, um, be a, a member of the first panel at uh, three, and her daughter, Kayla Sove, um, as well. They're both licensed social workers. Um, she's uh, obviously younger than her mother, <laughs> but um, she has uh, experiences uh, moving through college years and dealing with anxiety and, and helping friends through through some of the stresses of, of being a, a student and the academic rigors. Uh, we also have somebody who will uh, be from the Mental Health Pediatric Clinic, which is a health partners clinic that will sit on the panel to kind of give a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess when you said pediatric, I didn't even think of even younger children. A lot of anxiety. Oh, absolutely. Well, especially with start of school back starting, to school. back to school. Yep, absolutely. Lots of changes. And um, people will be able to ask, you said interactive, ask questions and things like that. So Yes, um, we'll have uh, Mary um, uh, Gugisberg will help as kind of a facilitator mm -hmm. and hopefully offer some prompts to the panel as well as the audience to try to get people to share out. Final comments for our viewers on why they should attend the screenings and, and things like that, or just about if they have questions in general about anxiety in a loved one and where they can get more information. Um, sure, absolutely. Well, they could uh, certainly visit uh, the Youth Service Bureau website. That's www 
ysb.net mm -hmm. um, would have additional information um, on this screening and others that they offer. Um, I would say, you know, just encourage anybody to attend. I think, you know, myself too, I've personally been affected by anxiety. I didn't realize what it was at the time, you know, post-divorce or going through my own divorce. Um, I didn't know how to recognize those signs. So I think um, encouraging people to attend just so they have an awareness of what to look for and um, ways to maybe help themselves or others uh, navigate those waters. And again, it is free, and it, the dates and time again are one more time? Yes, it's uh, Tuesday, September 17th. Um, we have a screening at 3 p.m. and another screening at 6. At and Serenity. it's located at the Serenity Care? Yes, it will be at Serenity Senior Care in White Bear. It's 1900 Weber Street. All right, Mariah, it's been great to have you on the show and to talk about um, this important health issue. So thank Absolutely, you. Absolutely, you're welcome. And we'll be back with more right after this short break. Stay with us. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. With macular degeneration, you lose your central vision. You have a blind spot right in the center of your face, so I can't actually see your face. So even that little circle in which I could see became a big blur. I was 65 when I first was diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. Eleven million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility, independence, changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes, and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses. It's true. When you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. And he's tagged in like 400 of my posts. Well, I can cut out tags. No, that's, that's not how it works. What is a tag? <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care would love to share their first with you. Finally, health care is always a top issue of concern for voters. For 100 years, women in Minnesota have exercised their right to vote, and they're celebrating their centennial with many activities and historical events, including a major event at the Minnesota State Capitol on September 8th. Please join us for the League of Women Voters Minnesota five-part centennial series to help commemorate and celebrate our 100th anniversary of empowering voters and defending democracy and of the passage of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. In 2019, we will host three signature events. On April 26, we will kick off a traveling history exhibit at Landmark Center in conjunction with our statewide LWV Minnesota Convention in St. Paul. This exhibit will travel in collaboration with local leagues across the state. On September 8th, we will host a community-wide open house at the Minnesota Suffrage Memorial Garden. This event will be free and open to the general public and will commemorate this special day when the Minnesota Legislature voted yes to ratify the 19th Amendment. 
And on October 26, we will gather for our 100th birthday gala at Union Depot in St. Paul to celebrate the official incorporation of LWV Minnesota on October 29th of 1919. In 2020, we will celebrate August 26th, Women's Equality Day at the Minnesota State Fair, marking this historic day when the 19th Amendment became the law of the land. And in the fall of 2020, we are excited to announce that the Minnesota History Center will be opening a major exhibit on women's suffrage and voting rights in Minnesota. We're so excited to partner with the Minnesota History Center on this exciting exhibit. Local League toolkits and events will accompany this series to include the traveling historical exhibit and ideas for featured speakers and events, and parade and summer festival ideas for the summer of 2020, which also help to support voter service events during this prime election year. Sign up on our website to be part of this great centennial celebration. That is our program for you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you join us again next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then. Thank you.